Do I remember? Yeah, you have it. It's compiling. Yeah, it's okay. We will start with something else. Three. Does anyone on group three has GenForm installed and compiled? Okay, cool. Four? Yeah, right. All right. Okay. Okay. So the next step for uh, everyone that can is to download the assignments. So if you go to the ICTP folder, uh, they sent you a an email. I think Vladimir sent you an email um, a few days ago. Yeah. Now there is something called Wednesday. You go into Wednesday and you should find input starting case assignments. Can you see that? Didn't you receive uh, an email from Vladimir? You sent an email with the sh to the students with the um, box, right? It says sure. that it, I, I Can you send the link? Because I see that they don't see the files. I don't know why. So if you go into the folder, you don't see open form, open MC. Huh? You don't have this. What, what do you see? What do you have? You didn't receive an email with links to this? It's not the same. Okay. Can you go to the chat and follow this link now? I'm sending. She's also, she's also sending by email. Let me check if it works. Suspicious link. Sent by email? So you should have received an email now with the link. If you follow the link and you include the password, you should land in this page. Do you have a new email now? Okay, everyone who is attending online, please use the link and password from the chat. And to everybody here in person, we'll send an additional email right now.
send the email also to me. Okay. Um, just, just to. Did you receive the email? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. So you see what I see. Okay. So you download it. Uh, not all of it. You go into Home Perform, Wednesday, and you do download all files. Yeah. Really? Oh. I see if I do this. And if, if I do this. I'll well, it doesn't matter. You can get all the folders. It's, it's not a problem. It's not big. So normally, once you go to your downloads, you will find the folder. We need to extract it somewhere. There is what? Stefano? Is there a problem up there? Because there, it, it's not in the email? Or? Huh? There is an email with the link, and it's correct. Someone received the email, and someone did not receive an email? Who has a, who don't have access to this? Right, just up there. So it's like four people. There is a kind of a regional problem. Are you sending another email? Or? Because the other option is that you join Zoom and you will find okay, no. the link. No. So she sent out another email. Can you let us know when you receive it? Well, there can be a, a, a lag. Just sent it, so it's normal if it doesn't come immediately. But let me know if, when, it can, when it gets to you. You have it? 
And there's, there's a link now? Okay, can you go to the link, download everything? Okay, cool. So for those of you who have Linux, you just uh, open the, well, you have to un uh, unzip, open it, and go to Wednesday. For those of you who are using Windows subsystem, uh, you will have to move the folder into the subsystem, because otherwise it's gonna be very, very slow. So how you do it? Uh, from Wednesday, from uh, your downloads, uh, you literally copy paste the thing into the Linux folder. How do you find the Linux folder? Usually in the, your Explorer. You go to the bottom, you will find the Linux. You click on it, you will find your installations of Ubuntu, or yeah, I assume you have Ubuntu, you go in, you will find the file system, and you go into home, I assume there is your name in there, and you copy it where you want, in the home it's okay. So you can literally well, either copy paste or drag it. So at that point you should have a Wednesday folder available on Linux. So in principle now if you go here, you ls, you should, uh, sorry, you ls, you should find a Wednesday folder. If you were directly on Linux, you didn't even have to copy paste. Can you let me know when you have the Wednesday folder ready? Who has problems with this? Okay, all right. So the first thing we do, we open the assignment. So we know what we are doing. You can open it on Windows. You don't need to open it on Linux if you're using the WSL. All right, so the idea of today is to try to do, to start from where we were on Monday using open form and try to repeat the same case using a community developed tool like GenForm that allows us to add Neutronics. So the idea is to complement the thermal hydraulics with the Neutronics using a different tool. We are still speaking about the molten salt fast reactor. Geometry is very simple. You have a core, hot leg, cold leg, you have a pump heat exchanger. The pump and the heat exchanger are porous regions, right? We said complicated things, we can do that with porous medium. First assignment. Sorry, yeah. And now yeah, that is something that is different. What we had last time was a very simple geometry. This time we do a real geometry. It's uh, hourglass shaped. Uh, the reason why this geometry is used, we'll find it out later. Um, so the idea is to start from where we were, which means I will not ask you to redo the CFD calculations because you learned how to do that on Monday. So things like setting up uh, initial and boundary condition for velocity, pressure, 
creating a mesh, all those kind of things, I already took care of it for you. So if you look into what I gave you inside the Wednesday folder, there is something called starting case. The starting case is pretty much what we had Monday. It's just the gen phone version of it, which means that pressure, velocity, k, epsilon are not in zero, but they are in zero fluid region. They are in there. That's what I was explaining to you today. Uh, you have three different folders for three different regions. So we will not go through this again because this was done on Monday and we will have absolutely have no time. If we do it again today, we will end up at the end of the day having done the same thing. Keep in mind the only difference compared to what we did Wednesday is that we are doing it in a case that is multi-physics, so we are just filling it, the fluid dynamics part of it. And I did that for you to avoid wasting time on something you already learned. So the idea of the first assignment is pretty much to at least do the things that are very different from standard open form. So I provided you the case with initial conditions, boundary conditions, turbulence properties, thermophysical properties, all those things that we learn how to do. There are two things that are different in gen form compared to standard open form. One, of course, is the control dict. Control dict is not the same, right? So something you will have to do is open the case, look at the control dict, change it as you think it should be changed. My suggestion is go through all the keywords. Try to understand what each of the keywords is and try to set it the way you think makes sense. Most of the keywords are human readable. You should understand what they are. So try to go through the control dict and see what you think you can change. The other thing you have to change is the momentum source. You remember that on Monday we included through FIVI options a momentum source to make it so that the salt circulates because otherwise you have a pool with no momentum and it would stagnate, right? You need to move your salt. The way we do it in open form standard is through FIV options. You can do that in GenFOM, but I would suggest not. GenFOM has been tailored to nuclear reactors, so we included specific um, capabilities for certain things, including pumps. Um, so what you will need to do is to set a momentum source to 300,000 kilogram per meter square second. Hopefully we got the unit of measurement right in the Z direction. How do you do that? Well, this is part of the assignment. So I think we can, you know, we have probably we can give half an hour for this, trying simply to get what we did on Monday, but with a different tool and trying to get the different options. And the thing that changed, as I said, the control dict and how to set the pump. And you may wonder how do I set the pump in gen form? I have some tips. Uh, well, the first tip is not even about uh, the exercise, it's a suggestion. When you start something new, try to open it in paraform or in paraview. Just look at the geometry, look at the boundaries, familiarize yourself with the problem. You can spend a couple of minutes, a few minutes doing that. Now, the complicated part, the control dig time confidence is going to be easy because it, you just start time, end time, solve things, yes or no, should be fairly easy. The momentum source is not, because this is a specific option in GenFOM. And you may wonder, well, I do not have a clear documentation. Everything is spread out. How do I find out? There is something in Linux that will always help you out. Do you know the grep, grep, grep command? Are you familiar with it? The Linux command that will look to files in a directory and search for a specific keyword. And you can imagine that you can go to the GenFOM tutorials. There are several of them. So you enter the tutorials folder in GenFOM and you do a grep. I, R, I means insensitive to case, R means recursive. So it will search through all the files inside 
the tutorials and it will search for a specific keyword, pump. That is an easy way to find a, control dic um, a dictionary in GenFone where we use the pump. May seem complicated, but what I, we are saying is just let's try to find a tutorial where someone uses a pump and let's see how we set it. Does that make sense? Um, you can even go farther than that. Yesterday while playing around I did it because if you do grab pump you will find a lot of things and maybe you want to find a uh, pump in the face properties dictionary which is the specific dictionary that we use in fluids to set things. If you have access to ChatGPT, you can ask ChatGPT, give me a Linux command to find pump in an, um, um, file name face properties throughout a folder. It will work, I tried it, it gave me the exact specific command to do that. Just a suggestion, we live in a world where we have access to generative AI, it can help you out a lot speeding up your uh, workflow. Can be ChatGPT. If in your country you don't have access to ChatGPT, try to take a look if you have access to other generative AI tools. They can help you out a lot. They're not necessary, but they will spare you five minutes here and there, and at the end of the day, maybe half an hour more to go out with friends. So what I will be do now is I will do nothing for like uh, 20 minutes, let you play around with this thing. We will be here. If you have questions, you ask. Uh, we do not want this time to drive the whole thing on the screen. So I would like you to give it a try. And in 20 minutes, we will start doing it together. In the meantime, feel free to ask questions. I would like it to, to, to see at least, at least from uh, each of the the exact solution, the exact, the solution, yeah. the velocity field of uh, the fluid inside the geometry. Something I forgot to say, um, you will have to set a solution time of approximately 10 seconds to get to a steady state. So you will start from zero, run it for a physical time of 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, it will be in a steady state. So just from zero to 10, only fluid dynamics, no energy, no neutronics, no thermal mechanics, only fluid, repeating what we did, but we jump on. If you have no idea on where to start, you let us know and we will get to you. This is just for your curiosity. Like, this is how I use ChatGPT. I asked, I need to find the keyword in files that has the name face properties. I'm in Ubuntu. And it provided me with this answer. Find all this thing, you include your keyword. This string in the terminal will find all the face properties file where the keyword pump is used. Hmm? You can use whatever you want. It's just, you can use everything you want. It's just, it took me like uh, 10 seconds to write this. I got this, I copied the code, I put it into the terminal and it gave me the right answer.
Se devono fare copia e incolla del caso ogni volta su Windows è un po' una rottura di scatola.
One thing that might not be obvious is how do you run GenFoam? Well, you have to, uh, it's like pimple form, so at, in the terminal you write, but you don't write pimple form, you write GenFoam. It's spelled G, capital G E, capital N. I will write it for you. Well, it's actually spelled exactly like this. You need to be like we were before in the, in, in the open form environments. You will have to do this source that we did before. If you are stuck, you let us know. Because in like uh, seven minutes, I will start doing the exercise. Eh, stai facendo una roba utilissima, che continua a far così.
who managed to run it? Anyone else? Group four? Did you manage to run it? Yeah? Group two? Anyone in group two that managed to run it? Did, did you manage to run it? Anyone in group two? Anyone in group three? You managed to run it? Yeah? All right. Couple of minutes and then I will show you what you should have done, hopefully. All right, let's try to do something together. Um, so, as I said, the two things that are missing is the control dict and the momentum source. So this is exactly the string that I got from ChatGPT. If I execute that in the folder tutorials, hopefully, I get things. And it's telling me you there is a keyword name pump in several um, tutorials and in several files named face properties. So you can imagine that there are a number of tutorials where you can take a look at how to set a pump. You may notice uh, that there are several tutorials. The suggestion is always take the one that is closest to your case. In this case we have someone that is very very close to your case which is called 2D MSFR. Um, this is an extreme case, but very often you will find a tutorial that is similar to what you do. And that can give you a lot of information on how to set things. So if you look into it. Oh, this is small. Do you know how you, if I can make it bigger? Preferences, maybe? Hmm? Oh. 
No, I will not. Give me a sec. Yep. No? It's an editor. Okay, that one. Proper references? Yeah. Control più più. Eh, mm. Vorrei tanto provarci. La benedetta roba svizzera. Non è tab with. Se lo conviai. Se no faccio. faccio con nano. All right, so if you look into the, um, the face properties of one of the tutorials that by chance is uh, MSFR, you will find several things. Like I said before, you have structures. Uh, structures will have a volume fraction. They will have a di hydraulic diameter. And all of a sudden, you will find a pump. And you will notice that inside the pump, there is something called momentum source, which is exactly what you need, which, by the way, has exactly the same value that we need. How lucky. So you can take this, maybe, otherwise I will write it. And you can go into our, well, let's do it graphically so that you see what I'm doing in a most, more obvious way. So inside the case, we are modifying things that are characteristics of our system. So in open form, every time you have to modify something about models, physical properties, these kind of things is always in constant. We are doing the fluid region, so it's gonna be in the fluid region. And in the fluid region, you have a certain number of dictionaries. You will have turbulence properties. Is it related to turbulence? No. Thermophysical properties. Is it a thermophysical properties? No. The only remaining dictionary is called phase properties. You look into it, you will see you have a pump, and you can add a momentum source. This was tricky because this meant understanding that there is a phase properties, understanding that you have the easiest way to look into, uh, you know, you can go to, through the documentation, but it may take time. The easiest, look at the tutorials, search for a keyword that we use in the tutorials, and you will get an answer. The answer was actually pretty straightforward this time. Yeah. Uh, which was called the momentum source. Why there are three numbers in there? Well, it's a vector, right? We are in 3D, you need X, Y, Z. We are saying the assignment was give 300,000 kilograms square meter square second in the Z direction with a minus, meaning down. So if you do that, you have covered the part about properties. Now, the thing I said was missing again was the control dict. Now, when you open uh, the system of GenFoam, you find things that I told you about. You will find top-level dictionaries and then folders for each uh, mesh, for each region. You will have a fluid region, a neutral region, a thermomechanical region. Now, you can imagine the control dict is something that affects all the regions, so it's on the top level. You can open the control dict, and you will find something that is very similar to the control dict of... Hmm? Oh, sorry. Let me do it again. So, system. Hmm? I hate VI. <laughs> I hate VI. I'm allergic to it. Um, system, 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 control dict. Now it's a bit bigger. Too big. Okay, like this is okay? Yeah, that, that's my problem. I can open it, I cannot get out of it, yeah. 
So you open a control dict, you will find something that if you're familiar with open form, and as I said before approaching gen form, you should, it will look very familiar to you. You will say the name, we will see the name of the application. You will see a start time from, start from start time and a start time. Our start time is zero. That's the only folder we have. So we start from zero. Stop at end time, end time equal to, I said it in the assignment, I told you run it for 10 seconds. So we go for 10 seconds. Delta T, this can be a tricky one. We are solving for fluid dynamics. Delta T is your initial time step. What is a reasonable time step? Well, the general suggestion is shoot for a small one, because in worst case, it will adapt to something bigger. But if you start with a time step of one second, your simulation will likely blow up. This is way too big. If you're familiar a little bit with CFD, you know that time steps have to follow the current number condition, CFL condition, which means that your time step normally has to be relatively small. How small? This is a bit of an art. At the beginning, when you have to guess, uh, you will learn with time uh, to provide good guesses. In this case, I would guess for something like one cents of a second is probably a good guess. If you want to be very safe, you do one millisecond. It's a bit extreme, but then it will adapt. Oh, sorry, I was changing the wrong thing. Write, write control, this is an open form thing, it's not a gen form thing. We're just saying, please write at selected time steps, and I'm telling them, write every second. It's okay, we can write every second. Write former, purge write, we don't care, write precision eight, this is very high, it's okay because we will have to do neutronics. We don't care about compression because we are not doing uh, high performance computing. Uh, time format, we keep it general, time precision eight. These are all open form things that you shouldn't even care about them. These are uh, gen form things, not open form things. Solve fluid mechanics. Yes or false? Yes or no? Yes, this is exactly what we want to do. So solve fluid mechanics, true. Simple as that. These things will activate the, the fluid mechanics solver. Do we want to solve for energy? No, it is not in the assignment. Do we want to solve for neutronics? Not yet, we'll do it later. Do we want to solve for thermal mechanics? No, I said fluid mechanics, 10 seconds. Liquid fuel, do we have a liquid fuel? Yeah. So you just set it to true. And this is another not obvious one, a just time step. Yes or no? You are not supposed to know that. If you are familiar with CFD, the answer is yes, of course. If you're not familiar with CFD, it was a tricky one. The answer is true. Why? Because when you do CFD, you want the time step to adapt to the velocity so that you respect the current number condition. Again, this requires familiarity with CFD. You are not supposed to have that, and I'm telling you now, this should be true. If you said false, with a sufficiently small time step, you would still get a solution. Uh, max delta t, we don't care. We can put everything you want because it's, go it's gonna be smaller than that. And this is the current number condition. CFD, to make sure that your solution is stable, the current number has to be smaller than one. So I provided it to you already correct. It was one. Max power variation, we don't care. We don't have power in this simulation. Okay, so this was the control dict. You can save, get out, and hopefully, maybe, run it. If I didn't forget anything. And it will run. And it will take a while. So, to go back to what we did, you had, hopefully you had in every group someone that knew a little bit about CFD that could tell you, look, you need to adjust your time step. Um, otherwise, please feel free to ask us when there is something that is really not obvious, you ask us. We will come and give you an answer for every doubt you might have. Um, 
And the idea was simply to try to get the solution of what we already had. Um, it's gonna take a while. Unfortunately, WSL is horribly slow. You do it directly on Linux, it's gonna take half the time. Um, my suggestion is that we let it go, and I take questions, and then we get into assignment two, and later we look at the results of this, because I don't want to waste 10 minutes looking at this thing running. Do you have questions about what we did? Is there something that is really not clear, really not obvious? Or is vaguely not obvious and vaguely not clear? All clear? Yeah? Is it clear, clear, or clear? I don't want to speak because I'm not sure. Is, do you want to say something? Any doubt? Is it okay? It's running? Okay, we'll see if it was... It will give the same answer to everybody. So I will leave this thing running because it's gonna take a while. Unfortunately, we decide, unfortunately, it was a choice. We decided to give you a case that makes sense, not a single one loop, uh, one dimension. We wanted to give you a real case. The drawback of a real case, it takes a while to run. The which output, the para, para view. Para view, once it's done. Same thing, so if you have paraform, you just get into, that was surprisingly quick. Oh, because I made a mistake. You see? Yeah. I will let you know, I will show you now. Just give me, let me run it again because I forgot something, of course. So the calculation time was one instead of 10 seconds. Yeah, right? my mistake, I forgot to set to 10 seconds the calculation time. So let me run it again and then I will show you how to visualize the results if you don't have paraform but you have paraview. Separate. Um, so if you do not have paraform but you do have paraview there is something you can do inside the case folder you can create an empty file that has an extension dot form. So for instance, well, if you want to create an empty file, the, the command in Linux is touch. And you call it banana dot form, okay? Once it's created, you can open Paraview. It will take a while. I have to be patient with WSL. All right. Once you open Paraview, uh, I'm sorry, it's very small. I don't know how to make it bigger, but if you go to File Open and you go to your folder, you will see your banana.form. You open it and you will have something that is very similar to Paraform. It's just a way to tell part of you, look, you are looking into a folder that is an open form folder. So you should have that format activated. So what I'm showing you now is part of you. This is not part of form. The trick is just when you open a file with Paraview, it has to be a file in the format dot, in the extension dot form. Because Paraview has to know what format is. Paraview, you can use it to visualize tens of different formats. So it's somehow you have to tell Paraview, look, this is an open form folder. How do you do that? You let it open an empty file that, with extension dot form. Does that make sense? If they don't have paraform, I have. 
Yeah, it's just for people that don't have Paraform. Paraform, you just enter the folder, you type Paraform, it will work. Because it's already prepared to read foam um, formats. When you have Paraview, you have to do this thing. You have to let Paraview know that this is a foam format, so you will create an empty file with a dot .form, read it, it will read your case. So, excuse me, sir, I have a question, please. Yeah, go ahead. So, can we run uh, GenForm in parallel? Uh, yes, you can do it the same way as you do it with any other open form solver. MPI run, number of processor, gen form, uh, parallel. So it's exactly the same way as you do it in any other open form application. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Actually, if you run, if you open Paraview while the simulation is running, this is a good way to check that everything is working because we told OpenFOAM, we told GenFOAM to write results every second. So you can start looking at intermediate results. You should start seeing a solution that forms. So like for the moment, my computer has arrived to approximately one second. So the first result after one second should have been written to disk and that you can read with Paraview or Parafoam. So this is the solution after one second. It's starting to have a shape. This is the velocity, you have high velocity here. Well, let me put it in a reasonable, nope, nope. Yes, almost. You start that something is starting to form. This is a CFD, an unconverged CFD solution that should converge in 10 seconds, it, it is now at one. So you start seeing things that happens. A question that I have, here we have the heat exchanger. Do you know why we get higher velocity in the heat exchanger compared to the pump? Why all of a sudden the velocity increases? The reason is that GenFOAM is solving for the real velocity. And if you move from a region that has high vol volume fraction to a region where you have low volume fraction, out of conservation of mass, your velocity will increase. So if you go from a region that is completely filled of fluid and all of a sudden you enter a region where only 50% of the volume is occupied by the fluid, conservation of mass will imply that your velocity will have to double. So in GenFOAM you will see jumps in velocity when you move from one porosity to another porosity. Yeah. Please. Oh, Stefano, can you? Yeah. yeah. Point. Mass flow rate. If you want to conserve mass flow rate and you have mass flow rate number one and mass flow rate number two. Row one, 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 row two. If you do this equal to this, you will immediately realize that the ratio between velocity is equal, well, the area is the same. The ratio between velocity is equal to the ratio between uh, porosities. And this intuitively you should see that, right? If you have flow going into something that is smaller, it has to accelerate. This is Bernoulli. All right, while we wait for this thing and we trust that it will work, let's see if we got another time step, just for curiosity. Curiosity, refresh, move. See, now I have another time step. 
things are starting to look a little bit smoother. We're getting to a real solution. After 10 seconds, you will have a solution. Um, and there is something I wanted you to notice, is that if you looked at the solution we had on Monday, here we had a flat surface and we had a big recirculation area. Problem of the recirculation, high temperatures, because this thing heats up and it's not taken away. This is the reason why people develop this kind of shape for this reactor. It's to avoid the flow to stagnate into the reactor. So they actually gave the flow, the shape, the reactor, the shape that the flow likes, pretty much. This technically we say that we want to avoid flow detachment. So this is pretty much a real reactor velocity, um, geometry. It's 2D, the real one is 3D, but it's a good approximation. So while we wait, I would like to introduce you to, are you all here, first of all? So did you manage to follow what I did, change the control dict, change the face properties? Is someone not there yet? No, okay. Then we will wait that it runs, we'll look at the final results later, but I would like now to introduce the second assignment. It is a bit more interesting because we will do something new now. We will do neutronics. So, the second assignment is to start from the previous case. So please start from the previous case. Do not start from starting case. Start from what you already did for fluids. So you pretty much copy paste what we did but this time we want to solve for neutronics. Neutronics only, no coupling, no CFD, only neutronics. We just want to have a diffusion solution of our reactor. Now, if you want to uh, solve for diffusion, you may imagine that you need cross-sections, right? Now, I'm not asking you to generate the cross-section, so you will find the cross-sections already provided in inputs. So if you look back at the folder that I gave you in Wednesday, maybe, you will have a starting case that we started to use and we have inputs. Inside the inputs you find the cross sections. You will find things called nuclear data and then nuclear data, axial expansion, cloud expansion, fuel temperature and so on. These are the parameterized cross sections. So you will have to put this nuclear data in the right place in GenFone. You may imagine where it is. It might be related to the neutral region and it might be related to constants because we are providing constants. You will find it, but you will have to provide this which is given in inputs. And you may realize that you have a new region, you might need a new mesh, right? So in inputs I also provided a poly mesh. Polymesh is the mesh for neutral region. I call it polymesh underscore neutral region. You will need to provide your case with this mesh. Okay? So the idea is to run a very simple diffusion case where I gave you the cross sections because it's a long time to generate them. You can use OpenMC, by the way. We have a script to translate uh, OpenMC format into GenFone format, for your curiosity. Uh, but this time I gave it to you, it's in the nuclear data files, which are in inputs. You will need to provide a mesh, which is in inputs. You will need to provide the reactor power. Where to find the power? I will let you search for it. It's not so obvious this time. Uh, but you can look at tutorials, you can grab there are ways to find it. If you cannot, you let us know and we will come to you. Um, a suggestion is look at nuclear data. Don't, do not just copy paste. Try to look into it. Try to understand how many energy groups, how many precursors group, how are we parameterizing the cross sections, these kind of things. Take a look, take five minutes for that. 
What I would like to do is to have an eigenvalue calculation. You will have to search where to set eigenvalue. I showed you before. There is a place where you can do that. If you cannot do that, grab eigenvalue, you will find it. You will have to set it to true. And then I would like to have a solution where we have, you know, when you solve for things, you need boundary conditions, right? We would like to have a solution where we set a zero value, so Dirichlet, zero boundary condition, and another case where we set a zero gradient everywhere. Zero gradient is a Neumann, zero boundary condition. We would like to see how the k-effective changes, how the flux changes. I have some tips to make your life a bit easier in addition to what I said. Maybe, cannot move my... Maybe not. Oh yeah. Some uh, suggestions that can make your life easier. Now, imagine you're doing diffusion with uh, 50 energy groups. You are solving for all of them, right? And then you may want, you, you, know, you know that for every field that you have, you have to provide initial and boundary condition. Since it's, it's really not practical to include initial and boundary condition for potentially 50 different fields, in Genform we provide something that we call default flux. You'll find it everywhere in the tutorials. This is a flux that applies the same initial and boundary condition to all the energy groups. So instead of having to create, imagine you have six groups or eight groups, instead of having to create eight fields that are called flux one, flux two, flux three, and for each one of them give the exact same boundary condition because most of the time they are the same and the same initial condition, you give one that is default flux. I'm telling you what's the name, and you give it uh, you provide the same initial and boundary condition to all the energy groups. The other thing is that I'm asking you to give a power of 10, 20 megawatts. We want to get to an eigenvalue where the flux corresponds to a power of 20 megawatts. Now, the MSFR is 3 gigawatts. Can you tell me why we are giving 20 megawatts instead of 3 gigawatts? Any idea what would be the reason for that? It's not because we want to do lower power. There is a technical reason, an open form reason for that. Because we are solving for only a wedge. So remember, in open form, we do always 3D. If you, don't do, if you want to do, like in this case, axisymmetric 2D, you have what it is, in fact, a 3D geometry, where the two boundaries have the wedge boundary. But then you have to tell open form, look, you cannot have three gigawatts in something that has an over aperture of three degrees, right? You have to have, you have to scale down your power to the wedge. Say again, sorry, I cannot hear you. Yeah, you have to provide the power based on the geometry you're solving for. So in this case, I mean, if you look at it from the top, your reactor is more or less like this, right? And this is three gigawatts. But what we are solving now is something like this. This angle is like 2.4, I think, degrees. So this is lit 20 megawatts is literally three gigawatts. Um, multiplied by 2.4 divided by 360. I think it's 2.4. You can double check this. But the reason is we are solving for a wedge. And you cannot say, okay, that wedge is 3 gigawatts. It would be absurd, right? So that's why we are insisting since Monday, always remember gen fo open form is 3D. And when you trick it to do 2D using boundary condition, you have to keep in mind that you are actually solving for a smaller domain, so smaller power. Of course, the power density remains the same, but the overall power does not. So I would suggest that you start doing this, then we take a lunch break and we continue after. But let's give it at least 10, 15 minutes 
uh, to this exercise. At least use it to get into the exercise, understand the exercise, ask us questions if something is really not clear. Sorry, uh, cannot hear you. I've been asked whether we are solving for neutronics or passing information from one mesh to the other. We are solving. The idea is we forget about the fluids now. We don't care anymore. We want to solve for a diffusion equation in the neutral region using the diffusion sol subsolver of GenFoam. Forget about everything we did before. We will put things together in the afternoon. But now, only fluid, we did it. Now we try to get a simple diffusion solution using the Neutronics Mesh. The Neutronics Mesh is available in the input folder. Nu nuclear data are provided in the in input folder, folder in the form of files called nuclear data and nuclear data something something for parameterized cross-section. So we want a solution. About um, other tips. Think about boundary conditions. As I said, we want a zero flux, uh, sorry, a zero gradient and a zero flux. We want to see both. You will have to play with both. We, will have, we want to have two different solutions. The other thing which is important, we are doing an eigenvalue calculation. I told you before that an eigenvalue calculation doesn't have the time derivative, right? Think carefully about what it means to do, because open form by nature does time dependent. So now you will go in there and set time steps. Does it make sense to have time steps? No, but it makes sense to have iterations. So you will have to use time steps, but those time steps will not enter a DDT because there is no DDT. This is a very open foamish way to say we are doing iterations. So the time step, in your case, will not matter. You can set a time step of 0.001 or a time step of 1000. What matters is how many times you do your solution. And this I can tell you, you will need approximately 100 iterations. So you can set a time step, fixed time step of one second from zero to 100, or a time step, time step of one millisecond from zero to 0 0.1 seconds. It doesn't matter, because in our eigenvalue equation, we do not have the derivative over time, but we need to iterate. So let GenFoam do 100 iterations with the time step that you want. It doesn't matter. If you have doubts about me, you let me know. But uh, keep in mind you don't really care, and you may not need to adjust the time step.
Yeah. Um, <coughs> you you see online. Yeah. I, I just for I've been asked online to repeat why the 20 megawatts. And the reason is, if you look at our reactor from above, it looks like that, right? It's pretty much a cylinder. If you solve for the entire 3D reactor, you have to provide 3 gigawatts of power. We are solving for a tiny slice of our reactor, which is, it has an aperture of 2.4, I think, degrees. So you have to provide a power that is scaled down, because otherwise you would provide 3 gigawatts to a slice of our reactor. That doesn't make sense. You have to provide the power that that slice has. So it's uh, pretty much 3 gigawatts multiplied by 2.4 degrees divided by 360 degrees. That is 20 megawatts, I believe. Check. And I remember if it is 2.4 or 2.5. I don't see comments, actually. Are there any other comments online? There, um, I don't see them, I don't know. If you want to generate your own cross-sections, you can use whatever tool you want. You will need to t translate that into a format that is the same of the nuclear data that I showed you. We have conversion tool for Serpent and OpenMC. So Serpent and OpenMC, if you generate your cross-sections, you will be able to use our tools to convert them into the various nuclear data files. If not, you will have to develop your own conversion tool, but it's easy. It's, uh, it's a Python script and you can modify ours for your own tool. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a diffusion solution and uh, you have access to a field and you can calculate peaking as maximum divided by average. This is something you can do easily with uh, part of your paraform as a post-processing of your results. Okay, still five minutes, then at uh, 12.45 we go for lunch, okay?
So last um, suggestion before lunch, because this is really not obvious. So I told you that you have to give the power. Where's the power? The target power. Um, it is in a file that is called reactor state. You can locate it, but I can show you where it is. So that you know, when you do this at home and you learn, you have time for that. Today we don't have time to search through everything, so I will show you. But and uh, let's take the starting case. So you. And um, I told you before, we have fluid region, neutral region, and thermomechanical region. I hide the fact that we have another one that is called uniform. And I shouldn't have. No, it's because I forgot. Um, inside the uniform, you have data that do not necessarily belong to one single region. It's data that have impact throughout all the simulation. It's the same logic as why we have FIV solution and FIV schemes, not only in the neutral region and FIV and the fluid region, but also on top of the folder. So we have an additional one. It's called reactor state. And if you look into reactor state, you will see two important parameters, K effective and P target. P target is what you need to set to 20 megawatts. This is the target power. And the K effective is the K effective. It's going to be the result of your calculation. But this one is the initial guess. You can give whatever you want, unless it is unreasonable. It, Genform will use that as an initial guess, and then at every time step, update it with the calculation it is doing. But the target power it is in something called the reactor state which hopefully, you know, if today here we don't have much time, but hopefully, you know, if someone does it at home and look at the folder, it will realize that there is a file that is called reactor state and hopefully we'll look into it. So today I will tell you it's reactor state and the parameter is called P target. And this has to be set to 20 megawatts. So this was the last one before lunch, as I said, so I will let you have lunch and uh, you can ask questions if you want during lunch otherwise you do it later and uh, we get back here in one hour so we start again at 1:45. please be on time we have stuff to do this afternoon we have to couple our solutions and get to our first multi-physics solution